been so bizarre. The terror operation was in its final 24 hours. In a city in the Emirates, Bin Laden's mysterious money man appeared again. This time to collect cash, sent back from America via a money exchange. $5,000 from Mohammed Atta and two other hijackers. They were obeying Al-Qaeda's rules, returning money to finance future missions. The transfers were received by Mustafa Ahmed Al-Hawasi. Mustafa Ahmed picks up $5,000. The next day, he disappears to Pakistan. That was the day of the attacks. I wouldn't say more than that. That explains a very strong link. Mustafa Ahmed is wanted across the globe. So too are the three remaining students from the Marienstrasse flat. They fled just days before the attacks. It's believed they're in Afghanistan. They're suspected of providing support for the terror group in the States. One of them is the man who should have been the fourth pilot, Ramzi bin Al-Sheib. He holds the key to the many unanswered questions about the Hamburg terror cell. The night before the hijack, Atta and another hijacker headed out of Boston. It seems the plan was for the 19 men to split up to avoid attracting attention before catching their flights. The two men checked into the Comfort Inn in Portland, Maine. Their final hours would be spent wandering the city. A document entitled The Last Night would later be found in Atta's luggage, also in a car used by the hijackers and in the wreckage of a plane. It made it clear that death lay ahead. Make an oath to die. Remind yourself that in this night you will face many challenges. Obey God, stand fast. That evening, images of the two hijackers were captured by various security cameras. No one knows if all 19 men read Atta's last instructions or whether it was just the pilots who knew they would die. Atta appeared stern-faced in the background, but his young companion seemed oblivious, even carefree. I can't believe that 19 people were aware that they are going to die, and none of them just disappeared a couple of days before the attacks, or even at least said something about it. In his instructions for the last night, Atta urged the men to make a final checklist of their passports, wills, and knives. It was a chilling reference to their victims. You must make your knife sharp and must not discomfort your animal during the slaughter. On the morning of September the 11th, Atta and his companion caught a short flight to Boston Airport. These last pictures of the men show no sign of what lay ahead. When the hour of reality, the zero hour, approaches, open your heart and welcome death for the sake of God. by what he did yes. here at the university and to you? Yes, yes, we feel, of course, of course. What do you feel? You teached him, you are interested, you supported him. What do you feel when you hear that this is a killer? At Boston Airport that morning, another group of hijackers assembled. Marwan al-Shehi flew the second jet into the south tower of the World Trade Center. Remember to pray before reaching the target. After that, God willing, we will meet in paradise. Okay. 
It doesn't matter what Bin Laden says about it or what anybody says about it. But these people were wrong, terribly wrong. A third hijacked plane was smashed into the Pentagon shortly afterwards. I can't find anything that have affected our religion more than killing those people, thousands of people. In the skies above New York's burning landmarks, another tragedy was being played out on board Flight 93. News of the earlier attacks was filtering through on mobile phones when the hijackers stormed the cockpit, the captain shouting, get out of here. Then air traffic control heard a voice on the intercom. It is presumed to be Ziad Jarrah's. Hi, the captain. I would like to all the remain seated. We are home aboard and are going to back to the airport and to handle our demand. So please remain quiet. Air traffic control asked other planes in the area if they had heard Jarrah's threat. We'd like to 956. Did you understand that transmission? Hey, affirmative. He said there was a bomb on board. United 93, understand you have a bomb on board, go ahead. They called Flight 93 22 times, in vain. United 93, United 903, do you hear Cleveland? United 93, United 93, Cleveland. United 93, do you still hear Cleveland? At 10.03, Flight 93 crashed into the fields near Pittsburgh. Not since the height of the Cold War had most of us felt so vulnerable.